Hey guys, what's up? By Sactatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and welcome to a CWO premiere video. It's been too long since I've done one of these, but I'm back to it, and we are getting ready to go into the playoffs this weekend. Exciting stuff for sure. The 16 clans moving forward have been determined. In this video, I'm gonna be telling you guys all the clans that are in it, what the first round matchups look like, who's favored to win, all the stats you need to know. Um, basically at the bottom of the screen you'll have some information, at the top of the screen you'll have some information, in the middle you'll have some replays from the most recent One Hive Genesis Wars. So all the stuff you guys need to see and I'll be talking about all the matchups. So let's get right into it. Why don't we start here by throwing up all the clans that are in it on your screen right now. You can see 16 clans divided into 8 matchups. One, at least one clan representing each division. Um, some of them have two, and one of them even has three. You can see One Hive Genesis has made it as well. I'll talk more about that once we get to that matchup. But there, there it is. Um, the 16 clans that uh, fought through the regular season, through bans, um, through all kinds of crazy stuff. We've lost quite a few clans, uh, to be honest, but these are the top clans, and I think all of them have the potential to get the victory, but of course only one can. Alright, let's start with that first matchup you guys saw at the top of the screen just a moment ago. FYSB versus One Hive Genesis, the 1 seed versus the 16 seed. This is going to be an interesting matchup. I'm going to be in the war. Um, where do I start? I guess the two clans faced each other uh, way back when in week two. FYSB got the win 84-82, so um, a pretty close war, two-star difference. And I think FYSB definitely separated themselves from a lot of the clans later on in the season. One Hive Genesis did not do that, um, but we were able to offer a few buys and um, just the wins we already had uh, eco way off to the playoffs. But to talk about FYSB for a moment, uh, the last two weeks they have had buys, and I think unlike a uh, typical sport, the buys don't necessarily work in your favor because you are um, you can get a little bit rusty with not having war the last two weeks. I'm sure they're doing arranged wars or at least some random spins, but they haven't had the CWL matchups the last two weeks. Genesis hasn't had like three weeks of uh, matchups, so we're not in much of a better boat. But um, the last war FYSB had was a win over... Uh, DS, they got the win 84-79, so looking good. Uh, like I said uh, previously in my videos, they're one of those clans that's consistent. They're going to put up 83, 84, 85 stars, somewhere in that range. So I think they are looking to uh, do that, and hopefully it'll be enough to defeat OHG. But um, uh, in Genesis, we're looking to get the win to shock the, uh, the, the league and get the upset. We finished at 5-6. and six. Basically, we thought we were out, but Invictus Prime is no longer in the league, and that takes away one playoff uh, spot that is uh, everyone moves up one, and we get to go in at 5-6. and A um, little bit of a rough season for us. It was just... <laughs> I don't want to make excuses, but there were some unlucky moments. Um, we've had some people not do their attacks. We've had... Uh, tiebreaker losses, we've had one star margins, we've we've seen it all really and I think that's made us stronger. Uh, we're looking pretty solid, we've had some great arranged wars the last few weeks, we've been doing very well and I think it's uh, it would be unfair to count us out for sure. We're going to put up a good fight, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm not going to make any picks in this video but um, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Moving right along here, Pinoy Banditos 1 versus We Are Spartans. This one should be an interesting war. Let's start with Pinoy Banditos 1. What have they done this season? Um, well, they finished at 8-3, winning the Wizard Division. They, um, in week 11, faced Grumpy Old Men, got the victory in a close one, 84-83. So they're coming off a victory in week 11. But the week before that, week 10, they faced King Jeffrey, lost 86-83. So um, they've kind of been an inconsistent clan. They've been up and down. I think that's evident in their average star differential, which is actually in the negatives, negative 0.1, which means they have slightly more stars against total than more total stars for, meaning they've had some wins, but they've had some big losses. Those three losses, I believe, were all big margins. So it should be interesting how they perform this week. Um, it's difficult to win if you're an inconsistent clan because you have to get, um, what is it, four straight wins. Yeah, because it goes uh, 16, then 8, then 4, then 2. Yeah, four straight wins. 
and that's not easy to do if you can't put up the consistent numbers, but let's, let's see how it goes. I think they have a good shot. So what about their opponent? We are Spartans. Well, week nine, that was uh, just a few weeks back, they took, our Mar took out Marshall's Nation 85-82, which is a good win over uh, what is definitely a solid plan in Marshall's Nation, who actually finished 9-2. That was only their second loss of the season. Week 11, they had a bye in week 10. So moving on to week 11, 83-80 over Forged from Steel. Uh, definitely a good week for them there as well. So they're going in strong. They have a, what is this, a four-week winning streak. Um, that's definitely encouraging. They finished the season at 8-3, same as Pinoy Banditos. And they're averaging... Uh, 83 stars for 82.9 actually just about 83 so I think they've been a little more consistent but we haven't quite seen them explode um, should be interesting I think Pinoy Banditos has the um, the uh, kind of the ability to win being a hot and cold clan kind of going up and down a little bit we are Spartans I think it's been a little bit more consistent this season but um, you can lose to some hot and cold clans if you can't put up the big numbers some weeks so we will see how that one turns out. Moving right along here, the third matchup uh, you saw there was Hindustan versus King Jeffrey. This is an interdivisional matchup. We have the Balloon Division, two clans uh, coming from there. King Jeffrey at eight and three, winning the division. Hindustan at seven and four. Gonna be an interesting one. Let's talk about Hindustan briefly first. Um, these clans actually faced in week five. Hindustan got the victory 86-85, a very high scoring matchup, a shootout, I guess you could call it. Um, so Hindustan got the win, but that was quite a while ago. More recently, actually in week 11, just last week, Hindustan lost 83-84 uh, to Finland War. Finland War being at four and seven, the bottom clan of that division. So not a good way to go out losing to the bottom clan in your own division. That was part of the reason they did not take first place in the division. Um, but regardless, they're going against King Jeffrey, eight and three, um, coming off a bye in week 11 and a week 10 victory over Pinoy Banditos, 86-83, as I previously said. Um, so I think King Jeffrey might have a little more momentum. They're on a six week winning streak, whereas Hindu stands on a one uh, week losing streak. I always thought Hindu stand was extremely underrated, at least back when I was kind of analyzing the uh, the uh, league but now that they've had a few uh, weeks towards the end of this season it seems like they've been kind of dipping down so I think this is a good chance for King Jeffrey to show they really are the top clan in the division and they can uh, get the victory but we'll see how that goes just as we will for every matchup. Next one we got here Forged from Steel against Grumpy Old Men. This one's going to be interesting Forged from Steel winning uh, the I guess most successful division if you want to call it that with uh, three of the four clans moving on to the playoffs, including uh, We Are Spartans and One Half Genesis. But Forge From Steel gets the win there uh, in terms of the division at nine and two, uh, just getting it above We Are Spartans at eight and three. Coming off a loss in week 11 against We Are Spartans, the second place clan actually, um, 80 to 83. But they had a win in week nine uh, by week 10. But if you go back to week nine, they did beat Marshall's Nation 85-82. But that is going back a little ways so the most recent war not the best performance i believe they've kind of had some ups and downs they are averaging uh 83.3 stars on the season which is not bad and uh they i believe maintained a divisional record of two and one you can see right there so um they're only lost within the division going to we are spartans in that last week in terms of grumpy old men they had a week 10 loss to Hindustan, 83-85, and a week, uh, what is this, week 11 loss to Pinoy Banditos 1, 83-84. So coming off two losses, um, they're on a two-week uh, losing streak, which I believe is the biggest losing streak for any clan going into the playoffs. Two weeks, not huge, but it is it is something. They have a record of six and five, so one of the uh, the lower seeds for sure, averaging 82.4 stars. And um, I think Grumpy Old Men, you know, they came out strong at the beginning of the season. We've seen them kind of be so-so, but I'm not going to count them out. I think We Are Spartans is susceptible to having some kind of suspect pedestrian weeks. I think we've seen it from them. I would not be surprised if Grumpy Old Men really brought it, but um, it's hard to say for sure. Next matchup here, Marshall's Nation versus CZX Knights. 
Marshall's Nation 9 and 2, the X Knights at 6 and 5. This one's kind of a weird matchup because two very different clans, I think. CZX Knights has been a little bit more unpredictable. Um, they've, they've won some, they've lost some, they've had some big margins. They are averaging 83.5 star, stars four, which is one higher than Marshall's Nation. So they actually do have more total stars, but that's only half the battle as bases do make a difference. And you can tend to uh, see which clan has the best bases by those average stars against um, once you get through enough uh, matchups to kind of account for the, the skill level of the clan they're facing. So um, CZX Knights, I think they have the potential to win this for sure, but Marshall's Nation always seems to do enough to get the victory. Now they are only averaging 83.4 stars four, and for a nine and two clan, that is pretty low. However, they have a very, very low, I think possibly even the lowest in the, in the league, average stars against 80.8. .8. That's a very low um, amount of stars there. If you face a clan they only get 80.8 .8 on you, you better win that war. Well, I guess they can't get a point, but if they get 81 stars, that is a very, very winnable war. You don't need a great uh, attacking game for that. They are averaging 2.5 stars for differential. So they're, they're winning their matchups. Um, they're doing what it takes. They're not you know scoring a lot, but I think their bases are what's making the difference for them. It'll, it'll be interesting to see if CZX Knights can overcome that being a little bit of, an, of a hot and cold, inconsistent clan, I think they have the potential to uh, to kind of just have a great week to get one of those 86, 86 star wars, but they also have the potential to get blown out here. Two very different clans. Um, I, I got a root for the underdog, but we'll see how this one goes. Next one here, we have Dark Looters X versus Emphatic Fury. Very different clans, again, in the sense that DLX came out hot. They still finished pretty solid, but um, they were hot and relatively cold, I guess. Whereas Emphatic Fury started off very slow, but then they built that momentum and finished the season strong with a three-week winning uh, streak. So taking a look at DLX for a moment, they are 8-3. and three. They um, came out, like I said, extremely strong. They looked almost unstoppable the first few weeks until they were dealt their first loss from the, uh, also at that time, undefeated Marshalls Nation. I believe that was back in like week four or five or something like that. Um, so they are averaging only 82.5 stars for. They've had a very calm, uh, dormant, I guess you could say, end of the season. Uh, they had a win and a loss. I believe the loss in week 10, the win in week 11, but only scoring 82 and 81 stars for. So not exactly... Um, anything that's too intimidating. On the other hand, in terms of uh, in terms of emphatic fury, they're coming off like I said that three-week winning streak. They did score 83 and 84 stars in the last two weeks, so a little bit higher. Um, solid performances. If you look at the average stars for emphatic fury at 83, dark looters x at 82.5. So despite the um, you might think DLX would be higher in that, um, especially with um, the better record. Emphatic Fury is scoring better, and uh, they have a, a just about a break-even point. They are giving up a, a few more stars than DLX is, but that's not a huge difference. I think Emphatic Fury has the momentum. The only difference is can they um, can they not choke here um, and not screw this up because I, the Dark Leaders clans are very well run and I think that um, that might come to their advantage here in the playoffs. Next matchup here, WHF2 versus we'll say LT, I believe it's Leichtug, um, but I never like saying that just for uh, fear of screwing it up. Um, WHF2 83 or 8 and 3. Um, LT7 and 4 on the season. WHF2 has had an interesting season. Um, they've been good, but they've had some weird weeks where they've gotten blown out, I believe, and that's made them have more total stars against than stars 4, despite being 8 and 3, which is hard to do. They're um, averaging negative 0.1 uh, for their star differential. So interesting stuff there. They are in a two-week winning streak. They are 3-0 and in their division. So they've been dominating that division, um, able to get the, uh, the victory uh, in the division over Emphatic Fury, who's just one uh, game behind them. And then the other two clans, just one game behind that. So all clans were actually, or actually two uh, games, or two wins behind that. But all clans in that division were similar. So good job to WHF2 beating each of those clans in their division, um, despite it being a very contentious division. In terms of uh, 
sorry, in terms of LT, uh, looking through my notes here, in terms of LT, 7 and 4, they do have an average star differential about 1.9, uh, you can see there. So that um, is encouraging. They did lose last week, though, um, to 3 Point Park 8480, and that's not good to have a 4 star differential loss to a clan in your own division that has a losing record. Um, Three Point Park has had a solid second half of the season, but still not a good sign for LT. They've put up some great weeks though, and I think that they should be able to, um, to put up a good fight against WHF2, who I would say is definitely the favorite here. But um, both clans not extremely high scoring on the season as a whole, but both have the potential to do so for sure. And our last matchup we have to talk about, J-Off versus Dark Avengers. This one is going to be a shootout. I think it's going to be an extremely, probably the most high scoring war of the first round of the playoffs here. Both clans able to really put up some numbers for sure. Dark Avengers, I think they've been one of the, um, the most underrated clans going into the playoffs here. They've had some very tough weeks. Their record 7-4 and four does not do justice to the stars they've been putting up. Averaging 84.1 stars four. They are averaging 83.1 against, which is a little bit high, but not too out of the ordinary. So um, they're coming off a victory in uh, week 11, 86 84 over Art of War. So an 86 star war. Um, nothing out of the usual, especially when they're hot. They've had, a, they've had some cold weeks, but um, when they're on, they are on, and they can really put up a show. Jay off the exact same story. Just a little bit more consistent in that regard. Nine and two, so they are two wins ahead, um, top of the minor division, averaging 85 stars for, which is an incredible feat to average 85 stars over all of these weeks, averaging only 81.8 against. So that gives them the extremely high differential of stars of 3.2. They're on a seven week winning streak. They might be the number one clan going into this thing, um, even though they're not actually ranked number one uh, as the number one seed. So um, the last week, or they had a bye, but in week 10, they put up a 86 to 80 victory over Dragon Rejects. So uh, definitely a clan that can really put up some numbers. This is going to be a shootout. Um, Jay Off definitely has the edge, being a little bit more consistent in those extraordinary numbers they like to put up. But both clans have the potential, and I'm definitely going to be looking forward to this uh, war this weekend. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. That will do it um, for all of the matchups. Hope you guys are as excited as I am. These 16 uh, clans all have a good shot, and we'll see how these first eight matchups go. But um, one thing I want to say before I sign off here, I will post a video soon where you guys can fill out a bracket for who you think is going to go all the way, just like an NCAA bracket. There will be prizes, um, different stuff. I'll talk about that later, but I want to make this as fun as I can. And uh, you guys will see tons of coverage of our very own war against FYSB in One Hive Genesis. So all of that to come. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys are excited uh, about CWL premiere coverage being back on the channel. Um, it's been too long, like I said, but I'm here now. These videos take a little longer to make, but I'm willing to do it. I have the time now, and uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. See you guys in the next one. Bisectatron out.